So, um, yeah, uh, we have uh, two speakers on this talk, uh, Martin and Martijn. So it's a bit confusing, uh, but uh, uh, since uh, Martin already had uh, many other uh, talks, like uh, I decided to take care of this one. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we we both work at Deltares here in Netherlands in Delft, and this is a picture from our campus. It's the largest wave simulator or uh, w um, wave flume in the world. Um, we both. Uh, our maintainer on Julia Geo, uh, uh, helping to build the ecosystem to work with the uh, geospatial data. Um, but um, I'll be pre presenting on something that we're doing not in our spare time, but really like uh, for work. And that's uh, working on hydrological models. So uh, uh, I'll be presenting two, uh, two models. And I'll, uh, after that, I'll talk a little bit more about interfaces and, and like how we can possibly achieve this power to the user uh, theme of the of the session. So uh, WFlow was was our first model. We have we have more than two uh, models that we develop at Deltadas for different purposes. Uh, but WFlow was the first one to be uh, rewritten uh, from uh, a different language to Julia, and and overall that's that's been a big success. So it originally was in Python, but it wasn't. Uh, quite fast enough. And um, so Ribosim is, is uh, uh, what I'm working on right now. Uh, so it's, a, it's more for water resources management. And it has actually a long history being written in Fortran in the 80s. Uh, but, um, but that code, it, it just uh, wasn't maintainable and hackable uh, to the degree that we want right now. Um, so, uh, and for instance, uh, we are redesigning it based also on, on, on uh, newer data standards, like the geo package, for instance, which means that uh, if you have a Ribosim model, it's all the data is in a geo package, which means you can just load it in QGS and, and it will show up on the map and you can see uh, all the data that's in there. Uh, so, so in the case of Ribosim, Right, so as we have three layers, and uh, so it's a physical. Uh, we use ordinary DFEQ uh, to to basically model this uh, differential equation, the uh, the water balance, uh, which is a very simple ordinary dif uh, differential equation. But the the model that we're building will actually be quite large, and uh, here I just show like uh, uh, the main. Uh, uh, distribution network of the Netherlands, um, but um, but uh, um, we will be uh, controlling in, in the order of thousands of uh, of uh, more than ten thousand nodes where we control the water balance, um, and we have s uh, separate layers like a control layer that's implemented using callbacks and optimization layer to fairly distribute water between users. Uh, that's using Jump. But this model, uh, uh, of course, because uh, it only uh, models the uh, the surface water, and but of course it can uh, infiltrate into the groundwater. So we cannot really make a cut there. Uh, so so in the Netherlands, in Dutch application, we want to couple this to other domain models uh, that take care of the unsaturated zone and and the groundwater. Um, and these are existing models that we are not rewriting yet uh, <laughs> but they're in Fortran so we have to couple to them so so um, yeah for um, for Ribosim and uh, Wflow both uh, even though they are implemented in in Julia we basically build it in a way that that nobody can complain about this fact like we we'll, 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 uh, we are building executables and that they can use uh, in the way that uh, fits in their existing workflow. So for both packages, we have, for instance, Python uh, workflows, Python preprocessing packages that, that uh, derive the data. And that's also, and that's existing workflows, but it's also to some degree uh, the, the, the ecosystem that's uh, more mature in, in Python. Of course, we'd like to see that change in the future and well, that's part of the reason why we're working on the uh, Julia Geo ecosystem. 
Um, but, but that's the reality for now. So we're making these ex executables using package compiler. Uh, this week there was talk about GDSC, so we'll be able to get much smaller binaries in the future. Um, so then how do we do this coupling to these other languages? And so, so we use an uh, interface uh, from the CSDMS, the basic model interface. And that basically describes some, some verbs for like, okay, this is how you initialize a model. This is how you do a time step. This is how you get the data out. Um, and, um, and so, so, so that's, um, there's a package basic model interface.jl that's basically just empty function stubs. And that says like, okay, go and implement it in, on your own model type so that we can communicate. And, and you can use that in, in, uh, in Julia to communicate between Julia modules. But it's basically written for uh, uh, targeting cross-language interop. And so so in, uh, in Julia, you can have much richer semantics. Um, so for, for instance, like using the SIML interfaces, uh, 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 that would achieve many of the, the same goals, but allow more. And that doesn't mean that you have to use all the SIML solvers, and, but you could use just the interface packages, for instance, to say, <coughs> to say like, take a time step, um, give me the data. Um, and so so it, it, it can really be this simple in this case, because uh, Ribosim is using uh, SIML and the, the uh, thing snake uh, take a time step already works. And in the BMI, it's called update. In, uh, um, in common solve, it's, it's called step. Uh, so that's, um, and that's I, I think that's maybe something worth considering. Like, should we start implementing these interfaces to make it easier to uh, work together, basically? Um, that was my talk. Any questions? Are there any questions? I will be giving out the microphone. No questions yet. Okay. Oh, here for one. It, it's just out of curiosity. Like when you have a model like that, do you like also assimilate data into it uh, continuous, or how does that work? So for uh, Wflow, we uh, we do that. Uh, we have coupled it with this uh, software called the uh, Open uh, Data Simulation. Um, for Ribosim, we have not done that yet, but that's also, for instance, how you could use the BMI uh, and to 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 um, yeah do data assimilation, for instance. Yeah. Okay. Are there any more questions? Otherwise, I think. Sorry. Question. I guess in the Netherlands we collect a whole lot of da data right about water. Yeah. So yeah. how does that work with, I mean, I suppose these models, they are from first principles like phys physics, right? Uh, but then at the yeah. same time there's all these, this data about the actual water levels. So how is yeah. the kind of calibration process when you make these models work? Um, yeah, so um, basically we, we, it, it's, it's quite a large project because we are gathering all the data from all the water boards in the Netherlands to, to make these parameterizations. And, and then and we, of course, try them out, compare them to, to, to observations. And, and right now we're, we are at the early stages to just get it approximately right. And uh, yeah, it's already quite good. So we haven't really started the fine tuning part yet. but. I'd like to um, see if we can use, for instance, SIML sensitivity to like maybe automate the, the, the last turning of the knobs. That um, would be interesting. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Again.